welcome to my java video series in today's session we'll talk about how to initialize properties using different techniques so here we are going to talk today on property initialization or you can simply say uh, providing input to the object and accessing data from the object so this could be like this so this is your object and suppose uh, you have some properties here age and name suppose you have two properties I can set the data here in, in the object I can set the data here an object and I can get the data here from the object so we do only two operation in the programs this is input and this is getting the data out from the object will be your output so let's begin uh, from different uh, let's begin from the code and that there, there are different options to initialize the data and access the data but I'm going to start from the simple approach so let's have a look at the old technique so let me copy this my old class from my old project to the NetBeans <coughs> so you can practice from the command line but uh, some side by side I prefer to use NetBeans also because learning tools will be great for uh, high productive development so you should practice in both environment to start any programming language you should practice from the command line in most of the cases and 40-50% cases you can practice from the NetBeans also so uh, close my old previous projects just a minute just a moment so here I'm going to create a new project and copy my class so this is my class object application and I'm going to save in this work directory fine it is creating a main class I don't require this because I have copied my class from previous program so this is my class I copied here I copy paste here and this is the class I have got here and here I'm going to talk about the initialization techniques so look at the old scenario first remove this all additional code here okay fine look at the simple program I'm going to do this job in single line just a minute okay ready so here we have a simple class dog with two data members age and name and one method so we understand this now remove this comment so we have simple class two properties one method and now this is my main class I'm going to test this so here I created the dog object in a slice the age and uh, set the name here and call the method fine now run it you can see here similar output as we have done in previous session so this is how you can see dog eating and this these are the values I supplied from my program so these are two values I given to the object now uh, the point of discussion is I can initialize the data in property through this simple technique so access the property directly through this dot operator from the reference and assign the data so this is one of the simplest technique to assign the data in your object now if I'm going to assign here some wrong data then what happened suppose I'm going to pass here d1 dot age and I pass here minus 10 so I passed here minus 10 minus 10 is a negative age which is logically wrong compiler is not going to show the error JVM is not going to show the error so this is a logical error why because age cannot be negative so suppose if someone is accessing this age property outside of this dog so dog is a different class and this is your different class so when you access the age property outside of the class the user can pass anything the user can pass anything means user can pass here suppose it has passed here minus 10 so logically age cannot be negative so this is your logical error 
compiler and JVM they are not going to expose this but your program has some problem because it is accepting here wrong age so this minus 10 is a age which is a wrong age logically so how we can protect this so ideally ideally your program should not allow anything which is wrong so what I call this problem I call it problem in robustness I call that dog is not robust and it is accepting wrong data so dog is not robust here and that's why you can pass anything which is illegal so I can protect this illegal data from this simple technique I can make it private so when you make it private no one can access the age property in different class so now there is a problem here you can see take the mouse here age has private access in dog and we cannot initialize the age here we, uh, we cannot access the age in different class so now this is wrong I cannot do this because this is a private property now what will be the alternative method to initialize the age so I can provide a method here public method so that it can be accessed outside so I can provide a setter method here which will set the data for age so this is set age I'm going to take here value a stands for age the user will pass data in this variable as argument and this age will be set to this age property so the value given in a will be copied into age now let me call this method here so I'm going to remove this name because my discussion is all around this age so I think I can make it little simple so, and remove this Tommy because my whole discussion will be around the age only okay fine this is ready now I'm going to call here d1 dot set age so pass here 10 years so print the run this program and you can see here age 10 years right so this is the another way to initialize property now let me talk about the problem so we were talking about this problem minus 10 so now is that resolved no it is still there problem is still there I, I can pass here negative age which is again same problem so now when you have a method here you can write a small logic to protect means setter will help you to set the data in of properties but your problem is still there so how I can do this I can write a small logic inside the method which is actually responsible to receive data for the age property so if age is greater than 0 means it is a positive age then accept it so when age is correct allow and if it is wrong do not allow so if anything goes wrong you can report the error here so this is your problem wrong age so what you should do here you should not silently accept this error and uh, you should raise the problem here so this method must raise the problem so that this caller will be notified if you directly print the message here if you directly print the message here suppose you print here wrong age so this error will be printed in your terminal but this error is not notified to the caller so your program is this eat method is called from main so when problem is occurred in set age this problem will never be reported to the caller so who is your caller main so this is not a right choice so, so ideally there is a standard procedure to communicate so we can report the error with the help of exception Java has support for exception handling which is responsible in my case to report the error to the caller so if anything goes wrong in set age method the problem will be reported to the caller and who is your caller main method is your caller so how to report the problem let me prepare a message here I'm going to prepare one error message and this is your I call it wrong age for sorry sorry this is wrong value for age 
so we are supplying here wrong data for the age and what is that wrong value a so this is my error message and this will be reported to the caller with the help of a small exception handling code so I need to raise the exception here so probably you cannot understand right now this line but in exception handling series we will talk more in this exception throwing from the program so this is how I can create the object and what about this value you have been receiving here so we call it an argument this is your argument and when someone is supplying wrong ar argument I can call it illegal argument so we have class available in the Java library to represent this problem illegal argument exception means you have been passing wrong argument so report the error message here this is the error message so this line will raise a problem and that will be reported to the caller so a problem will be thrown here with the help of this exception object and this using this throw keyword throw keyword is responsible to throw the object and this object will be caught in this catch uh, in this main area so the problem thrown from the uh, set age method will be received in the second side so look at this now run this so when you pass anything wrong it will report the problem so this is a problem illegal argument exception and look at this class it, it is belong it belongs to the Java dot lang package right it's in build class library class and look at the error message I write here so wrong value for age minus 10 so this is minus 10 which is a wrong data for age so look at this and even after the, the problem is uh, reporting you cannot see this last line in your output look at this the last line is not executed just a minute suppose this is your line number last this is your last line look at this you will never reach to the last line because when problem is generated here when problem is generated from this line these two lines will be skipped means this time you will not continue you cannot continue with the wrong data but try the right data here so let me make it positive so when you pass here correct data it will work and you to go to go till the end so when there is a right data you can go till the end when there is a wrong data you are not permitted to continue the execution so now I can say this dog is robust so this is your robustness so this is how you can see the robustness of the dog so this is your robust because it is not tolerating anything wrong it is not tolerating the wrong data or minus 10 is a wrong data for the age and this program is not accepting and what is the objective of, of this set age method set age method is responsible to decide right or wrong data for the age so this set age method is taking the data and it is deciding whether the data is correct or it is not correct so it is validating the data also so these two are working together so this is your data member and this is your member function so they are kept together because they are working for each other so this is a simple technique to initialize but initialization alone is not enough we required here getter methods to access the data otherwise this age is a private member this cannot be accessed outside so we have a technique here public and what is the type of age integer this is get age get age follow the naming conventions carefully and return the age here so you can see here return value this is age written by the program and you can access the age here so let me write a message here age is I can access the age and uh, this is your d1 dot get age so you cannot access age property directly but with the help of with the help of this getter method you can call you can access the data so this is how you can see here data this is your eat method and this is how you can see the data written by your method so this method will return age in fact if you need you can initialize this return value to a property suppose I can call, store in this data into this variable just a minute so this 
get age method will return age and I can store that age and you can print here so this is another way so there are there can be multiple technique to work with the objects but this is a simple technique to set data and let me summarize quickly so this input is done here through the set age method set age method is taking here data and this is the argument given here and get age method is returning some data so this is your output from the object so this is setter and this is getter so we also call it setter setters are responsible to set data in the object or input in the object and getters are returning data from the object so this is getters so setter and getter are the two standard procedure to set data into the object and access the data from the objects so this is enough discussion about the setter and getter in next series uh, we will talk about some more techniques to initialize properties thank you very much for now